This is the Oppo Ace 2, which is the successor to last year's Oppo Reno Ace that so many people came to love. Starting price is just 3999 RMB, which is around 560 US dollars. They give us this little flap to open up the box a little bit easier, similar to what OnePlus have done recently. We get a silicon case in the box here, nothing too fancy though, it's decent enough for day one use. And we get a pair of wired USB type C earbuds, which you never see in phones, especially at this price point. We have a USB type A to type C cord in the box over here with that nice little yellow finishing touch over there. You get a SIM ejector tool and we have this wonderful SuperVOOC 2.0 65 watt charging block to charge the Oppo Ace 2 up in no time. We'll get to a charging test a little bit later. Here is the phone in Moon Rock Grey. This is the version that I have anyway. Eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. We have that wonderful, I mean, it's arguably wonderful, Oreo-shaped camera bump at the back over there. Slapping that case on, gives a little bit of a matte feel so that you don't have too much of that gloss going on when the cover is off. Though looking at that gloss, it doesn't look too bad and the color kind of shifts from like a blue to a black to a light blue. It looks really nice. I haven't really seen anything quite like it, but it does have a very similar camera setup to that of the OnePlus 7T and the Redmi K30 Pro and K30 Pro Zoom Edition. The black is not quite as deep as the S20 Ultra via and it is pretty much the lightest phone I've used in a while. It doesn't look quite as classy as its bigger brother, the Find X2 Pro, but it has pretty similar accents all around with a nice clicky power button and split volume rockers, which I always do like. We don't have any space for an SD card over here, though we do have dual SIM and of course 5G capabilities in 2020. We have USB 2.0 transfer speed, so transfer files between your PC and your phone are going to be a bit slower. But we have a 4000 milliamp hour battery and 65 watt charging with 40 watt wireless air VOOC charging, which we'll get to in a minute. The camera bump is pretty big, not the biggest I've seen, though there is a little bit of screen wobble when on a flat surface. And comparing this phone to the Find X2 Pro, which is almost twice the price of this phone, going around the phone, things look pretty similar, though I must say that the Find X2 Pro does feel a little bit more premium. At the front, we have a 6.55 inch AMOLED Full HD Plus resolution display with HDR Plus technology in it. Oppo have stated on their website that it can reach a peak brightness of 1,100 nits. Of course, we have a 90 hertz refresh rate panel here with 180 hertz touch response rate. If you're looking at the phones of here, we have the K30 on the left over there. Next to that, we have the Realme X50 Pro and toward the right, we have the Find X2 Pro with the second one on the right being the Oppo Ace 2. The bezels are pretty much symmetrical all around and they're almost the same top, bottom, left and right. They look really great. On the left, we have the K30 Pro Zoom Edition with 60 hertz, Ace 2 in the middle with 90 hertz and the Find X2 Pro on the right hand side with 120 hertz when you slow it down to 10 percent over here you can see a big difference that k30 pro just looks absolutely terrible when you slow things down and you cannot go higher than 60 hertz on that panel i think the ace 2 has it right with 90 hertz at this price point i think 90 hertz is more than enough you don't need 120. 90 hertz when gaming would be great but for some strange reason even though this is said to be a gaming centric phone i've put on all the gaming modes that you need to get that 90 hertz but oppo is knocking it and clocking it at 60. No matter what you do, I have played many different games here. Both these games, Dead Trigger 2 and Bullet Force, have no frames per second cap, and yet they are capped at 60. Strange thing, around 61 frames per second. I am using an overlay from my computer over here to get some accurate results, and the Red Magic 5G got both these games at 144 hertz, no problem. The good news though, is that we do have some other customizability when it comes to that wonderful display, and we we can hide the notch as well or keep it in there when you are in many other apps. We have dark mode, which can be used for third party apps as well. We have a whole bunch of different screen off clocks over here. It's not ambient like the OnePlus, so it always stays on, which is nice. And it's nice and bright. You can also do some customization, not quite as deep as OnePlus do, but you can change some icons. And we also have two different ways of using navigation gestures. I do prefer the one where you can actually swipe in from the bottom right and left corner of the screen. This is something that OnePlus OnePlus used to do but are lacking and something that Samsung still have. We also have Dolby Atmos. The OnePlus 8 Pro is OnePlus's most expensive device to date. We have this really strange long looking box which they've used for a little while now and it is seriously expensive. Take a look at the top right hand corner. What is interesting though is that if you do buy it in China it is pretty much 140 US dollars cheaper than the global 
global starting price there. Those dual stereo speakers are not the loudest, but they do the job and they sound pretty decent, I must add. We also have 40 watt wireless charging with the AirVoox charger, but this is capped at 10 watt wireless charging if you use a different form of third party Qi charger. We also have reverse wireless charging, 10 watt reverse wireless charging, which is also always good to see in a phone that has wireless charging. We have that 65 watt wire charging SuperVoox block over here, and we're gonna go ahead and charge it up from zero to 100%. Yes, that's right guys, I have a full charge test in this video for you to drool over. So after just 10 minutes, we have 31% on Oppo's Ace 2. The Reno Ace was pretty much the fastest charging phone around at about 28 minutes. I think that the Realme X2 Pro was slightly faster than that though. When first out the box, the Reno Ace did do a slightly faster job. 30 minutes, 93%, it is absolutely flaunting it, but it couldn't beat it its predecessor, the Reno Ace. After 36 minutes, it decided to clock out over there, which is not so bad, but it's not record breaking at all. It's still really fast charging, but comparing it to other phones on the left hand side there, it doesn't come very well, not too close. But we do have a 4000 milliamp hour battery and we did 111 milliamps per minute over there. We also have a whole bunch of different animations when it comes to the fingerprint sensor and comparing it to the Realme X50 Pro, it's brother from its sister company Realme over here. It's pretty similar when you look at it from the two aspects of face unlock and fingerprint unlock. They're both just as quick. At the front we have a 16 megapixel f2.4 selfie snapper with 1080p 30 frames per second front selfie video recording. These pictures were taken close to the burning end of the candle at night, pretty much sunset time over here. So when we do throw on night mode, things look pretty great. Let's listen to the audio and video. What's up guys, this is Technic recording a 1080p 30 frames per second video on the Oppo Ace 2. The Oppo Ace 2 is completely locked at 1080p and capped at 30 frames per second when recording using the selfie cam. Let me know what you guys think of the audio and the video quality of the selfie cam. At the back, we have a 48 megapixel IMX586 sensor. This is the same main sensor as the Reno Ace. We have an 8 megapixel ultra wide, same as the Reno Ace. 2 megapixel depth sensor with black and white capabilities, same as the Reno Ace. And a 2 megapixel extra depth sensor. What were you thinking, Oppo? The Reno Ace had a 13 megapixel telephoto instead of this, and it was cheaper. Um, yeah. But taking a look at the actual photos, the 8 megapixel ultra wide, once again, this is shot near the end of the day here at sunset. 48 megapixel doesn't look too bad with these lighting conditions. 300% crop on that is very shoddy. Moving back to that 48 megapixel main raw and then going to that four to one bind pick, which is using a 12 megapixel resolution over here. Using two times digital, we don't have a telephoto lens, so we're only using digital zoom over here. Five times digital, things are already getting wonky. As soon as we hit 10 times digital, this is the max. This this is unusable guys. I think they should have just kept it at five times. I'm gonna have to take some more pictures and get into more detail with that. We don't have a macro lens though using ultra wide close up still does a pretty decent job. And using those depth sensors, of course, in all lighting conditions, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Using the camera at night though, night mode off over here, we have night mode on, which improves things a little bit. We also have night mode tripod mode and here it is, it looks absolutely stunning. You have to be seriously still or of course put it on a tripod. When it comes to video, we have electronic image stabilization here. This is also recorded at night or pretty close to night sunset time. 1080p 60 and 4K 60 are pretty nice and smooth over here. Not as smooth as can be, but definitely smooth for this price point. When it comes to ultra wide though, it is capped at 1080p that is the max and 30 frames per second is also the max and it is very shaky. 1080p 60 FPS, uh, this has no stabilization on at the current moment and I am running. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the stabilization mode. It does not look good at all guys. Like I said, I'm gonna have to get into a more detailed review here, but this is not the phone to go for if you want to jump into the cameras. We have the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition on the left and the Realme X50 Pro on the right. All phones have been updated to their latest software respectively. We have eight gigs of RAM across the board for the Sam 2 benchmark run. Of course, all of them do have that wonderful Snapdragon 865 processing chip run on seven nanometer plus technology. We're gonna put on all the high performance mode options on all three devices over here. 
here are the battery percentages and degrees in Celsius as well as CPU degrees in Celsius at the start of the test. We're going to go ahead and skip through the test here and get to the temperatures at the end. Battery temperature on the Oppo Ace 2 only added the least there, just adding 6.8 degrees, but it drained the most, minus 5%, but it does have the smallest battery over here. The Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition added the most in degrees Celsius when it came to CPU, and the Oppo Ace 2 just added 6 degrees Celsius in the CPU department as well. 595,000 gets first place for the Oppo Ace 2, second place, the Redmi K30 Pro with 590,000 and 588,000 for the Realme X 50 Pro, putting in third place over there. We get the best GPU and memory for the K30 Pro, and we get the best CPU and user experience for the Oppo Ace 2. The Oppo Ace 2 is an incredible looking device. It is what I would say a professional looking phone. It is a handsome looking phone. It feels great with that fluid 90 hertz refresh rate panel, though we're stuck to Full HD+. Plus. There is no IP certification over here and there is no space for an SD card. It does not have QHD Plus on this panel and the cameras are pretty subpar, but for this price point, I think it does an absolutely fantastic job, especially with having the option of 40 watt wireless charging. It is an impressive phone to say the least and if I had to pick one out of phones at the same price point, I would pick the Oppo Ace 2 every time. Guys, this is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.